Good afternoon and thanks for joining us right here on Midday Kentucky. We have our resident expert, Dr. James Stilwell, coming in on the show as well, giving you tips and tricks on to making sure you're getting that love in your life and in your relationship. We all need a little bit of that. Of course, we and like also we have the wonderful Dr. Susan Neal coming on the show because we all think at one point in our life, where's the years gone? <laughs> when we look Where in the mirror. Every right? day. <laughs> <laughs> As we're wow. putting on that makeup on <laughs> TV. So we're going to get into that a little bit later on. Of course, Miss Amber and Hello. Miss Heather in on the show Hello. with me today. I know because it's Wednesday. It's they're Wednesday. my two girls. On a, they're my Wednesday girls. What is? Remember the back in the day they used to say Friday girls. Was that a? It was good an old-fashioned movie. That, <laughs> right. It was a Girl Friday. That's it. Girl, Girl Friday. Friday. It was. I think they were just telling me my ear. I think there was more of an old-fashioned movie term, Doctor Stillwell. You're shaking your head, you're not sure. I don't think it's a term that you use now. Yeah, I don't think that would fly. Yeah. I don't think Wednesday I don't think girls it's a would sexist, either. I don't think it's a sexist term. I think it's, I'm going out for lunch with my girl Friday. Oh. Maybe it was a mistress. We don't oh, yeah, know. That's, well, well, I, I, that's does what that I'm thinking. Does that sound more yeah, like yeah, that? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> that, that, that's more along the lines, Wednesday girls. Can <laughs> someone tell us? Tell us, a, go over to our Facebook page and send me in a message so I can oh. look it up online when you, when you text me. Um, I'm pretty sure now I'm thinking about <laughs> oh. Girl Friday was your mistress. That's <laughs> um, Yeah. My Never girl mind. Wednesdays are not my girl Fridays. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're paying the bill. <laughs> 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 Not for However that. However it works, Whoa, well. I need to just back yeah, out of window. Like, <laughs> okay, for that, put I the need, foot back in. I need lunch. Um, lunch. Well, lunch. I always lunch. pay for lunch. I always pay for lunch. Do you? Yeah, I always do. Oh, All righty, everyone. Go. Are you ready for this? <laughs> hey, Amber, are you ready to read the script about the wedding? I'm ready. Okay, go for it, <laughs> Does your dream wedding seem like a far-off fantasy? If you have Girl Fridays, it probably is. But if not, Midday Kentucky and ABC 36 want to make your dream a reality with our ultimate Big Blue Wedding giveaway. It's valued at over $30,000 and our partners want to provide you with everything you could possibly need for your big day. We're talking the dress, the venue, the cake, and everything else that goes along. It's so easy for you to enter. All you have to do is go to WTBQ.com, click on the contest tab, and then submit a picture of you along with your fiance. Then, here is the very important part. Make sure to tell us your story as a couple and why you deserve to win. But you better hurry. We're already in August and you have until the end, August 31st, to enter. And then the voting round starts for the top three finalists on October 1st. It's very exciting. Very and it's exciting. It's been wonderful. So, since we've been emphasizing the story, people have been sending in some lovely stories. Oh, it's going to be hard to pick the top three. Are right, you ready for this? Oh, I right. got this story for you because okay. you're a mum. Yes. So you can tell me whether how you feel about it. I'm a father so has noise. defended his decision to ban his children from taking medicine, including antibiotics. Now these kids are 14 and 11, and the family think not talk taking medication is better for their immune system and their kids. And guess what? The kids are better off for it. The couple even kept one baby away from hospital when doctors told them she was likely to die from whoop, whooping cough, I should say, mm -hmm. whooping, and believed the natural nutrients in, in the mother's breast milk kept her alive. The only time the three children had vaccinations is when they were immunized before going on holiday this oh. last summer. Okay, here's the thing. I understand antibiotics. When I say understand, I understand why you don't take them. It, Le okay. Because I believe that th kids are kids. If you let them eat the dirt and you know, rub around the rubbish and all that sort of stuff, right. it's sort of getting them there. Kids that are on antibiotics as toddlers and coming up, um, their immune systems are shot. Now, I also want to say I'm not a mother or a father but I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. Where do you stand and how do you feel? I, I agree with you mm. um, about it, it's not the first thing that I do with my children. Yeah. I kind of let them see if, see if, you know, nature takes its course and, and okay. the cold, if the cold turns into something else, then Pneumonia yes. or yes. whooping cough y or well, whatever. The whooping cough, see, this is um, not taking them near a hospital. Yeah. Like, you can get that at Walgreens. You okay. can, you know, it doesn't matter where you take your kid. To not um, vaccinate your child, I think, is selfish to other children because oh. other 
children. And, and right now you can't get into um, schools without being vaccinated. Mm. Like, good luck getting into a school around okay. here. And that is a hot topic, but m my children are vaccinated. Now they just came out um, and they have two more vaccinations that you have to have this year. So this is an issue that comes up quite a bit in the Especially news. Especially in the news. Yes, because I know this story was in the UK, but in the United States, there's proposals all the time for bills to be on each state's legislature platter for it to be an option to not vaccinate your children to go to schools. And it's always a hot topic, like you said. There's back and forth on what are the pros, what are the cons, it's gonna affect all the other children. A huge reason a lot of people don't do vaccinations are their religious beliefs. So then that comes into play. I mean, it, anytime it's on, and I'd say every session, there's a bill on yeah. the majority of the state's list of this being an option. And it's usually struck down because the outcry from the other side is bigger than the religious reason. Or, or they think that the vaccinations are gonna cause some type of, huh. you know, like autism, or there's that, that whole thing going on. But is on. there but proof, see, this is no. the thing. I want, to say, I want to ask, and look, I would really be happy to have your feedback online, because we're not saying, I'm not saying I'm for or against it, I just don't know. Sure. But what I would like to see is the pros and cons, the evidence to say that it's bad for the for kids. For each individual vaccination. Yeah. I think there's this thing that private schools don't have to oh, no, enforce have it, to. do they? Oh, but yes, my children That may be a state thing because school. that's an individually run yeah. school and each school, I think, can make that decision for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I but don't know, if, if one religion, say, out west in Utah, um, Mormonism, oh. yeah. mm -hmm. they have different bylaws than we do yeah. and they can kind of suit that to how it fits for their needs yeah. but if they're going to go to a public school then yes right. they need those vaccinations. I think it's a, it's an important topic to have and it's interesting to see because I do believe we're talking about vaccinations there these kids were vaccinated remember but what he was saying is that he doesn't believe in antibiotics, antibiotics. and I, d I totally agree I can't remember I maybe took antibiotics when I had a tooth infection well, well, yeah, you'd have to. I'm just trying to go think. to your brain. Yeah. Well, I think, and I could be totally wrong. So anybody that's lived in Kentucky for a long time, we want to hear your feedback. But I think there was a case here a while back where somebody was not giving their kid vaccinations, and they were taking them to huge extremes to the churches where they use the snakes. Oh, well, that's oh. To oh. drive okay. it out of them. And no. I believe the oh. child died. Okay. And it turned into a huge, yeah. huge issue. Look, tell us what you think. Head over to our Midday Kentucky Facebook page. And don't quote and, me on And that. tell us what you think about that. This is something really interesting. It's the term housewife sexist. A journalist seems to think so because she claims it implies that women are submissive and men can't do the same role. She further argues that the term defines women by their marriage and their husbands. Some people agreed with her and others say she's out of line because some women want to stay at home and do the housework. Madam, <laughs> are you a housewife? I am a housewife. I am. Um, okay. Do you, are you offended by that term? By housewife? Being called a housewife? No, but but I also don't think that, you know, people understand how hard it actually is with children and and you end up watching your neighbors' kids. You know, you help you help out with the people that have jobs yeah. and, and all that. But um, yes. But is it sexist? I I don't think so. I, I don't I How don't. would you feel about it if you were a housewife? I mean, is this well? That David I mean, Goldman's that's how, David Goldman's um, passion in life. He wants to be a house, house dad, husband. <laughs> house husband, house well, hubby. I mean, you know, Beverly Hills housewife. I don't know. I just I don't think it's. But the most of them work. Well, let me yeah. ask: Is this something like? On, I'm giggling. But and I, I shouldn't. work. But it, Do you? absolutely. But that's is that your job title? Would you say yes. occupation? If you were to put on a government form what your occupation, would you write housewife? I would, I'm a stay at home mom, but that is a job. Absolutely. No, no, no but one's would you denying use the that it's a job. Would you use the word housewife as your occupation? No, See? I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't Why? use housewife. I would say stay at home mom. Okay. Yeah, I stay at home mom. Because then yeah. uh, we showed Cinderella, but Cinderella was not married. <laughs> Who showed the Cinderella? Housewife on our video. Oh, yeah. did we? I didn't uh -huh. even look up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So what, no, housewife, Cinderella well, wasn't. I <laughs> 
<laughs> this one thinks she's Cinderella, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, tell it's us not too late. <laughs> I don't think it's sexist. Fairy godmothers can come in. <laughs> I totally don't think it's sexist, but then again, I'm not a housewife. I, well, I, so I, don't, I don't take it offense to it. Yeah. Um, Maybe you do. Tell us right at home what you think. All right, after one of her regular customers, a woman with a disability that sometimes causes her hands to shake was refused service at a nearby nail salon Walmart cashier. Ebony Harris decided to help. Foregoing her break, Harris 40 offered to paint Angela Peters' nails for her. Now, the pair picked out a shade of sparkly blue that Peters liked and sat down at the subway seating area inside Walmart in Burton, Michigan. Here's the thing. We were talking about this in our production meeting and you were saying, is it wrong of the nail salon to actually refuse service to the gal? The, let's just give the background on this. She has cerebral palsy, yes. which can create severe shaking. Mm -hmm. So I guess the salon didn't feel comfortable doing that. Um, and and what, like you said, obviously this is a feel-good story. What a it great is. Samaritan yeah. she is to do this and for And I think her. that she went through this. I think she knew this cashier at Walmart. Yeah, she's been there quite yeah, a few she, times. Yeah, she had been there. So she had a relationship and... Kudos for this woman for, you know. But, but should right. the nail salon have said no to her? Which we deal with quite a bit on other issues, whether or not private businesses are allowed to say, eh, eh, maybe yes, no to different people. I, 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 would, I agree. I think it's okay for the business to say no. You do? I don't have a problem with that. Really? Um, yeah, because, um, and I can only go on from a salon experience. Uh -huh. Owning Which you hair, have. Owning hair salons. And I never allowed children in the salons. Right. Because even if you came in with your with your kids, <laughs> um, I'd say you'd have to go and get a nanny. Yeah. Or, what a yeah. monster. Well, yeah. no, because, no, and here's, let me no, tell it, you it, why. There's I understand. hot tongs I, sitting around. I understand. There's scissors. You have liability. Yeah. And that. what happens if the kid, God bless them, picks up the hot tongs yep. and scolds a hand. Right. Guess who's in trouble? Right. Me, right. not the mother. Right. That's understandable. Well, let me ask you, would it change your opinion if you were another client in the nail salon and watched this all go no. down? Would you go back? But what is I she going to do, would. I guess? What, what, what harm is she going to do? No, the cerebral, the, the yeah. gal with cerebral palsy. I guess that the salon owner was probably thinking it would have been too hard to handle if her hand was excessively shaking. I don't know. I don't think physically she would be doing any harm. But my point is, it is okay for a business owner. To say no. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to be very clear on this. I'm not saying that they should have refused her. The question was, do businesses, should they be allowed to refuse service? I agree. And as a customer, you would be totally fine if you saw this all go down? I probably would have done something like the cashier would have yeah, done. Yeah, because I, yeah. I, you know, as a, as a human, consumer, you don't. Not as a business it's, owner. It's hard to watch that. I don't know if I could go back to a place like that. Yeah. And, and that's not saying I'm so above this or anything like that, but it's, it kind of, it could affect your business. Yeah, it could. It and could. So it might not bother some people, though, that are sitting there, you know? Some I, people. Listen, but we also had. Um, people with um, disabilities come into the salons, do you know what I mean? And they were fine. But right. that was my choice right. as a business owner. We actually had a wheelchair ramp built into the one of the front of the shops, one of my shops, because in that area there were a lot of handicapped people. Which and we nice. didn't have an issue. Would it have hurt you to turn away this lady personally on like kind of a heart level? I, it depends on the service that she was getting. You know, I do remember there was one lady that she, um, I'm not quite sure what was wrong with her, but one of the staff actually clipped the top of her mm -hmm. ear, and it breaks your heart. Yeah, but what that. do you do? Like, it's, it's You're tough. You're trying, right. It's tough. Anyway, tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page, everyone.